So details are starting to trickle out about the human cost of the COVID era, disaster, tragedy, our own cultural revolution. We spend most of our time talking about the big things, but underneath it all were millions of people suffering, some in grotesque ways. Here's one example. At Georgetown Law School, administrators demanded that students wear masks at all times. No one was allowed to drink water in class. Students, of course, had to take the shots, whether they wanted or not, and then the booster. So one top student at the law school, called William Spruance, questioned those policies on the grounds they didn't seem rational or scientifically justified. Administrators did not respond to his arguments. Instead, they suspended him. They then forced him to undergo a psychiatric evaluation and threatened to report him to the bar to prevent him from becoming a lawyer. He made it out. William Spruance is now a practicing attorney, and he's written an amazing piece for the Brownstone Institute called Madness in Law Schools. He joins us tonight. William Spruance, thank you so much for coming on. It, they forced you to undergo a psychiatric evaluation? Thank you for having me tonight, Tucker. Yes, so after I was encouraged to give a speech to a student council type group at Georgetown, I received an email that I was indefinitely suspended from the school, that I'd have to undergo a psychiatric evaluation and waive my right to medical confidentiality. During the psychiatric evaluation, it would start with kind of innocuous questions like, do you ever, ever get angry? Followed by, do you get angry about masks? And then, do masks make you want to hurt anybody? So it was an ongoing cycle of questions that were designed to make me seem um, unhinged for willing for being willing to question their COVID policies. So we took a look actually at the speech that you gave and, uh, and people can find it online. They can also find your piece and I hope they will. It was entirely rational. You were asking questions about the science. You turned out to be completely right. Were any administrators at the Georgetown Law Center willing to entertain a rational conversation with you? I found that individual professors were willing to have the conversation with me behind closed doors, but they wished to remain, remain anonymous. As for the administrators, there was no such luck. While ostensibly this was about COVID, it was really part of a much larger cycle of events at Georgetown Law. We had people like Sandra Sellers and Ilya Shapiro who were thrown out of the institution just for being willing to question campus orthodoxies. And it was part of an ongoing double standard where if you're progressive and you regurgitate the proper slogans, then there's an indemnity built into shouting down speakers. This was on full display at Stanford a few years ago, a few weeks ago, rather. But if you're willing to question the orthodoxy of campus, then they'll bring the whole horde of administrators against you and work to professionally and socially and reputationally destroy you. And that's how I saw my issue, which happened in August and September of 2022, 2021, just four months later, Ilya Shapiro was kicked off of campus for questioning President Biden's decision to limit his Supreme Court nominations to just black women. So you went to prestigious undergraduate college. You get into one of the best law schools in the country. How shaken was your faith in our legal education system by this? Well, I thought I was attending a trade school for a skeptical profession. I think in the long run, it's hard to be optimistic about the future judges and administrators and unimpressive bureaucrats because Georgetown Law is really just an incubator for an unimpressive ruling class of tomorrow. And so these people won't stay on campus and just make the people there miserable. They'll be running institutions like Georgetown Law. They will be at various government agencies. They'll be judges. And that, to me, is the more alarming aspect. I made it out of this process relatively unharmed. I mean, it was about a week that was difficult in my life. But going forward, the people have come out to me since my piece was released about similar stories, and they're gone through far worse than me. And at the root of this is the administrators, and that's where these students and these professors and these administrators will go on to inflict more damage, which is why I wrote for the Brownstone Institute, which is hoping to curb this tide as soon as possible. What's most amazing is you're one of the only graduates of an elite law school brave enough to describe what you saw there. And that itself is such an indictment, really, I think, of your classmates and the people who run it. And so I'm, we're especially grateful that you're willing to do this. William Spruance, thank you very much. Thank you for having me on, Tucker. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.